Today we would like to provide you with an update on the details about attacks against legacy Cisco iOS devices called Sinful Knot. Without further ado, I'll turn the session over to our speaker, Omar Santos. Thank you, Chris. A few days ago, Mandiant, a division of RI, published two articles describing a type of persistent malware, what they call Sinful Knock. This malware is actually used to manipulate the software of a legacy iOS device, just like Chris mentioned. And uh, those, uh, the links to those articles are included in this slide. Uh, my team, the Cisco Pister, worked with Mandiant and confirmed that no product vulnerability was leveraged in this attack. To be successful, the attacker required valid admin credentials or physical access to the device in order to install that malware. Uh, once the uh, malicious iOS image was installed, the attacker could manipulate the device and, uh, you know, by sending HTTP crafted packets to the targeted device uh, in order to communicate with the command and control server. Uh, in response to these articles and uh, to these uh, attacks, Cisco published the documents shown in this screen. The first one is a blog describing the malware and the detection capabilities that we have in place in order for customers not only to detect, but also to mitigate these attacks. A security activity bulletin was also published and an events response page summarizing all the collateral information and additional resources was actually also published and is the third link in this slide. Uh, recently, the Cisco PCER also alerted uh, customers about an evolution of attacks that we actually have seen uh, against networking devices, and we published a bulletin, which is the one at the first link in this slide. One thing to highlight is that these attacks do not exploit vulnerabilities, but instead use compromised credential or physical access to install the malware on networking devices. These attacks target older uh, or legacy devices that do not have modern protections in place to help keep the, or help defeat or prevent the persistent attacks uh, that we actually have seen uh, recently. Cisco has been and continues to be committed to constantly increase the security posture of our products. And the second link in this slide provides more information about these new capabilities that we have in place uh, in our new platforms. Uh, additionally, the Talos team published the SNORT rule reference in this slide to help customers detect devices that could be compromised. It detects communications between the, de the affected device and the command and control servers that could be used to manipulate or to control those devices. Again, the affected devices were legacy iOS devices that have been end of life for quite some time now. Newer platforms support uh, technologies such as, as Trust Anchor Technologies, Secure Boot, and many others that actually check for signed images and help ensure that the code running on Cisco hardware platforms is authentic and it has not been modified. The link in this screen provides additional information about these technologies and, of course, you know, these capabilities in, in newer platforms. Um, there are many technical recommendations and best practices available that include methods for preventing and detecting this type of compromise. This screen has several of these uh, general recommendations. Of course, there are plenty of them. Uh, I would like to actually highlight a few of them. Uh, the first one is uh, uh, the ability to actually do iOS image verification, as well as doing runtime memory integrity verifications in the device in order to detect whether the iOS image was actually modified or has been potentially compromised. Uh, of course, you know, goes without saying, log analysis and having a centralized logging is, is imperative for customers to be able to to, to detect you know, these type of attacks or any other abnormality in the network. Um, other underlying system checks are available, uh, such as you know, core dumps and verifying unusual or suspicious commands in the device um, are also available for, for customers to take advantage of in order to detect these type of behaviors. The two documents referenced in these slides have all the details about these technical recommendations and many other best practices that I'm highlighting in this slide as well. Um, you know, some, some of these best practices are, are technical, some of them are operational. Uh, you know, to, to name a few, of course, you know, we, we have credential management, which is both a technical and operational best practice, configuration controls, change you know, management, centralized and comprehensive log logging, and, and also uh, in order to maintain network visibility, you can use tools like NetFlow and, of course, system logs 
to co maintain complete visibility and control of your network. The, the Cisco security or secure development lifecycle is actually a, a very well repeatable and well established um, a program within Cisco. And uh, Cisco's product developing uh, best practices or you know practices specifically prohibit any intentional behaviors or product uh, features that allow unauthorized device uh, access or, of course, uh, network access uh, that is not intended by, by a given user. Uh, exposure of sensitive information is, of course, uh, prohibited in, in our uh, practices and the bypass of security features or restriction. We are committed for sec the secure development of our products, of course, the supply chain security and customer data protection and transparency. Uh, you can obtain more information about our transparency and security efforts by visiting trust.cisco.com, which actually has references to m many of the best practices that I also uh, highlighted earlier in the presentation. Cisco also follows a well-established disclosure process for the reporting of security vulnerabilities. We work closely with partners and with security researchers and, of course, with customers to help mitigate any impact of a security vulnerability or even whenever, you know, with third-party companies to monitor and address, ad address any concerns. Our security vulnerability policy as well as security advisories and other publications can be found in the links that I'm providing in this slide uh, in this presentation. Now, Cisco also offers uh, a few services that can help customers assess and secure their network. These include integrity verification services, incident response, and infrastructure security services, to name a few. The links that I provide in these slides provide additional information about these services and the capabilities that are available you know, at Cisco. There are, uh, the following two slides are just a collection of additional reference uh, that, I, uh, that I have covered within the presentation, as well as other additional hardware or har hardening guides, uh, our security blog, tactical resources, as well as other best practices. So again, these are a collection of, of many, many different uh, references and best practices that we have available for you. So with that said, I would like to thank you for your time and have a good day.